my name is Sherry Werb and I'm Director of Education and Outreach here at the National Museum of Natural History at the Smithsonian. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the programs of the Sand Ocean Hall, um, one of our new exhibitions here at the museum. Um, our exhibits, as most people can see, use a lot of objects and there's a lot of information, a lot of things from our collections that you'll see on site here. But a lot of people don't realize that we have over a hundred scientists that actually do the research and bring their collections back to the museum. A lot of our scientists have told us over the years that they got inspired to do science because they had an encounter with a scientist. And so what we're trying to do is bring our scientists into the exhibit halls through a program that we call The Scientist Is In. Um, on Wednesdays from 1 to 3 o'clock, we invite um, scientists down. We just ask them to bring some tools of their science, some objects that they may have collected into the hall, and then invite the public to ask them questions and to talk a little bit about what they do. I think The Scientist Is In right now. Why don't we go check? Hi, my name is Carol Baldwin. I'm a research zoologist, also called a curator of fishes, uh, here at the Smithsonian's Natural History Museum. Uh, my research uh, emphasis is on diversity and uh, evolution of coral reef and deep sea fishes, and I'm one of three scientists who served as curators developing content um, for the new Sant Ocean Hall. Um, before I answer questions, I'd just like to thank the editors at Deep Sea News uh, for hosting this first The Scientist is In web blog. Kevin from the other 95% blog has a question about flashlight fishes. Um, these fish are actually one of my favorite uh, types in the ocean and, and I have one here. Uh, flashlight fish have a, an organ beneath the eye that glows in the dark, it's bioluminescence. And uh, Kevin's specific question is about how these flashlight fish evolve the ability to produce this light. Uh, there's a lot about flashlight fish evolution that we don't know, but one thing that we do know is that it's not the fish that's producing the light. There are actually living bacteria, luminescent bacteria, um, that are living symbiotically in this organ in the fish, and they're the ones producing the light. Uh, in most marine organisms that produce light, uh, they, they do this by taking luminescent bacteria that are living freely in the ocean into some sac or organ. Um, but uh, we don't believe that's how flashlight fish are doing it. Uh, the DNA evidence suggests that the bacteria of flashlight fish are more closely related to other bacteria of flashlight fish, and that means species, all the flashlight fish species um, around the world. And so that suggests that somehow the adults are passing these bacteria down to the young stages. We don't know when this happens, how it happens. The only known larval flashlight fishes that we have discovered don't have the light organ yet, and they don't have the luminescent bacteria. So something of a mystery there. Um, these flashlight fishes are deep reef fishes. They uh, spend the days in caves and crevices down in deep reefs and then they come out at night and because they have this light from this light organ they can feed on transparent uh, organisms at night that other fishes can't see. Okay, Karen from the uh, Beagle Project uh, has an excellent question about the Galapagos Islands. Um, people know them as a hotbed of evolution and they're familiar with uh, many of the terrestrial examples of unique species there like the Galapagos tortoise, the finches, the mockingbirds. But her question is about the marine realm and do we see the same thing, a lot of uh, uh, evolution and action and unique species in the marine realm. Um, the answer is yes. For example, you may be familiar with the Galapagos sea lion. That's a unique Galapagos species. Uh, the Galapagos penguin. There are many endemic um, or unique uh, Galapagos fishes, sharks, uh, invertebrates. Um, but in general, in 
isolated island environments, you're not going to see as many unique endemic species in the marine realm as you are on land. And the main reason is it takes two things for new species to evolve. One is geographical separation of the original population and the island population and long periods of time. And with the marine realm, you often don't get that geographical separation because some of the marine organisms as adults can swim long distances and many of them have young or larval stages that drift around in the surface currents and they get transported long distances that way. So you do see the same action in the marine environment, just often not to the, uh, quite to the same level. Right, Peter from Deep Sea News has a question about remoras, and uh, they're also called shark suckers. And specifically, he wants to know if there's any truth to stories about remoras uh, desperately trying to uh, attach to scuba divers. Um, well, first of all, uh, shark suckers or remoras, uh, they aren't like the vampires of fishes. They don't actually pierce and uh, suck blood out of anything. Uh, what they have is a disc on the top of the head that's basically a suction device. It works just like a suction cup and they simply uh, attach to sharks and stingrays and, and get a free ride that way. Um, I've also seen them attached to large parrotfish, uh, large wrasses, and to people. Uh, personally, I've had them attached to my dive fins and also the, uh, the uh, wetsuit on my legs. Um, but they don't stay long, they just kind of move around a little bit and then take off. So there's really nothing to be afraid of with these uh, uh, shark suckers. Um, the suction disc itself is actually a modification of the dorsal fin, that fin on the top of the fish. So it's a very unusual um, morphological adaptation um, that just functions to enable these fish to uh, attach to larger organisms. And the reason that they're attaching to you when you're in the water is that you're just a big target out there and uh, they're probably mistaking you for something that they would normally attach to. I'd just like to thank you for your questions and I hope you all have a chance to come see our new ocean exhibit. Um, we have lots of fascinating specimens uh, including this coelacanth. Uh, if you have questions that weren't answered, feel free to drop by the museum every Wednesday afternoon for the Scientist is In. Many of my colleagues will be hosting that. And uh, you can always uh, dive into our website at uh, ocean.si.edu. See you soon.